Hello, Alan here from the Open Air Mission. I've got a quick question for you. Why did Jesus die on the cross? I want to focus really on why this man died in this particular way. I wonder if you've ever thought about that. But why did he die in this most barbaric of ways? History tells us that crucifixion was reserved for the worst of the worst. It, was, uh, it wasn't for your kind of petty criminal. Uh, this was for uh, the murderers, this was for the, the bandits and the thieves and the robbers that would uh, steal and leave people to die on the side of the road. So why was this man, uh, a man who certainly doesn't fit that profile of being a wicked and an evil and a murderous man, why was this man Jesus, a man who only helped people, a man who uh, sought to heal and care for people, a man who uh, answered those with questions, uh, why was this man nailed to a cross? He was brought by the Jewish leaders to Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, and the accusation was that he claimed to be God. He'd made himself to be God. That wasn't a crime by Roman law, but under Jewish law, he should have been stoned. So I find it's quite interesting that this point of history actually happened. But on the one hand, we have a form of execution reserved for the most wicked of men. And on the other hand, we have a man who who did good, a man who helped people, a man who uh, was accused of blasphemy. And yet, at a point of history, these two things came together. That, to me, doesn't make sense. I wonder if you know the answer. Why did Jesus die on the cross? Well, we've got a couple of uh, options for you today. Uh, the first one, then, perhaps, uh, was he actually guilty? Maybe us Christians have just got confused over time. Maybe we're reading the Bible wrong. But as we look at the Bible account, uh, and there's four of them, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, they're the first four books of the New Testament. Uh, as we look at the account, as we come to it uh, as a historian, I guess, uh, looking at this historical account, uh, we can see that we, we're not confused here today in this culture. Uh, but actually Jesus uh, was not guilty. He did not deserve to die on the cross. In fact, we see even the man whose job it was to judge him, a man uh, who I've mentioned already, Pontius Pilate, uh, it was his job to find the fault. It was his job to put Jesus on the cross. But he couldn't find any fault with Jesus. In fact, three times he said something along these lines. Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no guilt deserving death. Three times Pontius Pilate wanted to let Jesus go. And in the end, he grabbed some water and he washed his hands of Jesus and of Jesus's blood. Because he knew that Jesus wasn't guilty. That he knew that this man should never have died in this way. And yet, it would seem he was a bit of a coward. That he gave into peer pressure and he handed Jesus over to be crucified. And that's what happened. So why did it happen? If it wasn't because he was guilty, why did it happen? Another suggestion for you quickly is, was it a mistake? Was it all just a big, unfortunate mix-up? Was it someone that looked like Jesus, who was a criminal, and Jesus was just mistaken for the person who really was bad? Maybe it was all just, it all happened in such a rush and there was such an anger that they didn't actually mean to do it. Well, again, as we come to the Bible, as we look at the account of Jesus on the cross, we can see uh, that this was not a mistake. They knew it was Jesus on the cross and they wanted him on the cross. Uh, as in our own country, back in the day uh, when people would be hung uh, and, uh, and put to death, people would come out and see it. It was a spectacle. And that's what happened at the cross of Jesus. People came to watch. And as they looked at the man on the cross, they made comments along the lines of this. Uh, he saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. They knew that this man was the man who'd saved others. And now they're mocking him. You saved others. You were able to heal others. You were able to help other people. Now help yourself. He saved others. Let him save himself. They knew that the hands that were nailed to the cross were the same hands that had brought healing to so many. They were the same hands that had brought food to those who had none in the feeding of the 5,000. They were the same feet nailed to the cross that had walked on water and done these incredible miracles. Not only that, but they knew this was the man who claimed to be the chosen one of God. This was the same person who claimed to be 
Messiah. That's why they wanted him on the cross. And now they laugh at him. If you really are the chosen one of God, then do it. Get yourself off the cross. Get God to save you. But you see, they were mistaken. Because the chosen one of God, the Messiah, had to come into the world so that he could suffer and die for the sins of the people that they could be forgiven in him. In crucifying him, they were actually uh, fulfilling prophecy that was written down hundreds of years before the birth of Jesus. In one of the Psalms, it's written uh, that you could see his hands and his feet pierced. Uh, and you can uh, read, as you read through Psalm 22, uh, the, the scene of Jesus on the cross. And that was written uh, hundreds of years before Jesus lived. It was written down that the Saviour would be crucified, that he would be nailed to a cross. And here is this man, the one who had healed many, the one who claimed to be God in human flesh, nailed to a cross, even though it doesn't make sense, even though their own law stated it shouldn't have happened, even though Roman law stated it shouldn't have happened. Here he is, the innocent, perfect, holy one, nailed to a cross, just like God had said hundreds of years before Jesus was born. I've got a third option, and I think as we look at these options, as we look at the life of Jesus, as we look at the death of Jesus, we can only come to one conclusion. Why did this man die on the cross? Well, it was to pay for our sin. The Bible says uh, that Jesus wasn't a criminal, but it says that you and I are. We are criminals. We may not be criminals by the law of our land, but we're criminals before God. A criminal is someone that breaks a law. Someone who goes against a law is a criminal. And the Bible says that you and I have broken the law of God. But Jesus Christ, the innocent one, died the death of a criminal so that we, criminals before God, could be considered innocent before God. That's what it says here. By breaking God's law, we are criminals before him, yet Christ died in our place to pay for our sin. Through his death, we can have forgiveness. Isn't it incredible? A man who had done nothing wrong died the death of a criminal. In fact, the man that many believe should have been on the cross was a man called Barabbas. Pontius Pilate, when he could see there was nothing at fault in Jesus, wanted to release Jesus. And the Jews instead asked for Barabbas to be released. And that's a great picture of why Jesus Christ died on the cross. Here's Barabbas, a wicked and evil man. He's broken many laws, he's, bro he's done many crimes, and he is about to receive the punishment for them. But Jesus Christ steps in and dies on his cross, and he is given a, a new start. And that's what the Bible says that happens when we put our hope and trust in Jesus Christ. That we who are guilty before God, we who have done many things wrong before God, wicked and evil things before God, we can be given a fresh start and made new through Jesus Christ dying in our place for our sin. The Bible says this in 2 Corinthians but he made him, that is Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Think about this. Uh, if you had a white shirt and you got some stain on it, how would you make it clean again? You'd put it in the wash, wouldn't you? You wouldn't get your tipex out and try and cover it over or get your white paint and try and make it look fresh. You would remove that which was staining it so that it could then be clean and white again. And the Bible says that our soul, our lives before God are stained with sin. And we can't cover it up with good works. We can't cover it up by trying to do things which would appease God. But the only way we can be made right with God, the only way we can be righteous is to have those things removed and taken away. And Jesus, who was innocent, died and became sin so that we who are sinful and become righteous in him. This is a wonderful message, uh, the best message you'll ever hear, uh, that Jesus Christ died on the cross so that you and I could know forgiveness. If you'd like to know more, uh, then you can find it in the Bible. Uh, if you ha have a copy of a Bible, then uh, I would encourage you to turn to the New Testament, uh, the first four books, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, and you can read of the life of Jesus in there. If you haven't got a copy of the Bible, 
and then you can download apps on your smartphone and you can read there the life of Jesus and the death of Jesus and the resurrection of how this man, this man who claimed to be God, proved he was God by doing the miracles of God, dying in the way that God in human flesh would die and rising again, defeating death, so that you and I could have hope in the face of death and we could know a place in heaven through his death and resurrection.